Hi ah guys welcome to free tutorial tv and I'm going to show you how to use set in python. Set is an important method for data science. So first of all what are set? So a set is an unordered collection that no duplicate elements and no indexing. So let's see how we can use set in python. So you can declare a variable and then is equal to and you define the elements inside in our curly bracket. So you can define multiple values here. For example one or more to come up by comma for almost seven or nine. But keep in mind that in set you cannot have duplicate values. So each value in set must be a unique value. For example what happens when we define a set but some duplicate values. I'm going to just declare this set and press enter here and this set is created. Now whenever I tried to access the values inside the set then it's going to give me this set and you can see that tool which was a duplicate which we have defined here is removed from this set. So our set always have unique values. And if you define a set with duplicate values it's going to remove the duplicate values and only save the unique values in the set. So let's see some of the method related to set. And the first method len method. And you can find the length of set using this len method and the name of the set. Which it returns the length of set. You can also use add a function. So a dot and to add element in a set. So I wanted to add 10 for example into my set. I can use this and then press enter. And once again when I tried to get the values inside that set. Hey you can see 10 is added to this set. But this time it will only be added if it's already not there in the set. If it's already there in the set nothing will happen. So let's try to add once again then to the set which already have a set. And once again you will see that nothing happens inside the set because 10 was already there. Now if you want to add multiple values in a set you can use update method. So you can call this method which is update and then inside brackets you need to provide these multiple values. So let's add some values into the set. So I'm going to add 15, 18, 17 let's say and 14. OK. And then press enter. And now I will see the values inside the set and you can see all these values are added to the set. You can also remove the values from the set. Now I can call a method name remove and let's say I want to remove 18 from the set. I can just give the element and then press enter and once again I will try to access the set and you can see 18 is removed from this set. Now there is a method called discard also. So let's see how we can use this method. Discard works similar to the remove method. So for example I want to remove this 17 from my set. I can write 17 here and it works fine. So when I tried to access the value of a 17 is removed. So what is the difference between a discarded method and remove method? So the remove method, whenever you call remove method and you tried to remove an element which is not there in the set for example I will try to remove 100 which is not that in the set. It's going to throw an exception. And it says key at 100. Now if you try to do the same thing using a discard method. So I'm going to use it for the discard here and try to discard 100 from the set which is not that in the set. It's not going to give me any error and that's the difference between discard and remove. So remove draws and error when element is not there but discard doesn't throw any error. It's not going to do anything. If the value is not there in the set. Now there is pop method. So to use this pop method with set and then press enter. And pop method return any random element from the set. So it's not necessarily that it's going to remove the element from the left hand side or the right hand side. It will remove any random element from the given set. Also for example I will declare a set of names. Let's say name equals max tom den. And if you want to clear the set you can use clear method. 
so that I can use this clear method in order to empty this set. So now when I try to access the values inside the set you can see it's an empty set with no values. If you want to delete a set you can use a DEL function and then the name of your set and then press enter. And once you delete that when you try to access it it's going to give you an error. That set name is not defined. Now you can also create a set using a set constructor. So instead of these curly brackets you can write set and in the double parenthesis. So you need to provide the double parenthesis here in order to create a set using the set constructor. So this is also going to create the set called the name. And when I tried to access the values inside the set name you can see it has created this set of names. Also you can convert a list into a set. So let me define a variable called and set and then I can use a set constructor. And inside these characters I can use the square brackets which we use generally with lists and then. You can define your list here and then press enter. And this list will be converted to a set and you can see the result here. Now similar to the mathematical set operations like union, intersection, symmetric difference. You can also use these mathematical operations related to set on the Python sets also. So let's see how we can use this mathematical set operations on our Python sets. So let me once again define a set. I have already one set A which is a which contains these values for example. And I will define a set B be some other set of values. So I'm going to define a set. So that is the content of the set B. Ok so now am I have two sets. And on these two sets I want to perform some set operations which are also used in mathematics. So you can find out the union of two sets using operator. Call the OR. Ok so when I write A. And this pike symbol which is called OR B it's going to give me the union of these two sets A and B. And what is the union? So a union of two sets contain all the elements that are there in the set A or in the set B. So I'm going to press enter and you can see it's going to give me the union of A and B. That means the set contains all the elements that are there in set A or in set B. Also I can use a method got the union instead of this or operator. So I can use a variable dot union. That is a method call union. And then you can write B here and then press enter. We're just going to give you the same answer. So you can either use this union matter or this or operator. Now let's see how we can find out the intersection between two sets. So in order to find out then the section you use it. And this operator and or and and then the your next set which is B here. So what is an intersection of two sets? So intersection of two sets contains all the elements that are there in both the set. That means set A and set B. So when I press enter you can see it gives me two elements inside the set and these two elements are. They're in A set and in B set. That's why we get only two values because these two values are there in set A and set B also. Again you can use a method called intersections or an intersection and then B which is going to give me the same answer. So either you can use this matter or you can use this operator. Now let's find out the difference between two sets. So what is a difference between two set? A difference between two sets contains all the elements that are in a set but not in B set. So you can find out the difference by this minus operator here. So when you write A minus B you will be able to get the difference between these two sets and this result will contain all the elements that are in A but not in B. You can also use a B minus and then it's going to give you other result because this time is going to give you a set which contains all the elements that are there in B and not in A. So the difference between set A minus B is totally different from B minus A and also you can use a difference matter. So A. Then you can call a difference matter B and it's going to give you the same kind of answer. 
you can see here and also you can call B dot difference A and it's going to give you the another answer of B minus A. Now you can also find out the symmetric difference between two sets. And what is the symmetric difference between two sets? A symmetric difference between two sets contains all the elements that are either in set A but not in set B or they are there in set B but not in set A. So this is the symmetric difference. And you can find on the symmetric difference using this cap symbol and then B. Now you can write as A cap B. And when you do this it's going to give you the symmetric difference between A and B. And whenever you find that the symmetric difference then you do for example B with this cap symbol A. It's going to give you the same answer because symmetric difference gives you same answer of whether you give A cap B or B cap A. The answer will be all the same. Also you can use method for symmetric difference so you can use this method called symmetric difference B and it's going to give you the same kind of result. Now one last thing I want show here is that sets are not indexed or ordered. So whenever you want to find out for example A and the value at index 0 it's going to give you an idea because there are no indexes in our set and they are not ordered by any index. So sets are an ordered collection of values. Now if you wanted to find out what all the other method which you can use with set you can create a set and then write the name of your set and then press dot here and you will be able to see. And this is the list of all the method that you can use with the sets in Python. Also if you want to list out all the methods that you can use with set you can use this in built function. DIR and then you can provide any set name here which is your variable name and then press enter. And once again it's going to print the list of all the method which you can use with the sets. So this is how you can use set in Python. I hope you've learned something useful from this video. See you in next video. Till then have a nice day. Wait wait. Don't forget to subscribe my channel.